So, what have we got this week? Anonymous, we make fun of your friends' Instagrams using robots. Uh, graffiti artist brags about his work on Instagram and gets arrested like he should have. And being good at Instagram gets you a job. Let's focus on that. Hey everybody, and welcome to After Chat episode 14. Uh, although you can't tell it from the bump, I'm calling this episode, It's Not About Instagram. Sure. Because all three things in the bump are about Instagram. Um, no excuse this time. What no excuse? We're not drinking Narragansett this week, so I didn't turn the bottle around facing forward. We could have. No, the, the whole thing is that a can, the label doesn't always face out on the drinking side. There's I, no excuse I, with a bottle. I just bet we could have bought Narragansett instead of Killian's. We just wanted Killian's this week. Oh, yeah, well, no, I just have issues with Narragansett out of a bottle. I'm sorry. It tastes better out of a can. It does. It's one of the few beers that tastes better out of a can and much better off, off the draft. So, anyway, I'm Tom Model from Aperture to Pixels Photography. And I'm the other guy. And the other guy. No, Ryan Pease from Peace Point Photography. I'm going to cut that out. You're just going to be eating the other yeah, guy. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good branding thing. <laughs> Tom and the other guy? The other guy. There we go. So, getting into our, our news this week. This is what I just found kind of amusing. Yeah. Uh, there's a seaside resort. Uh, what, what the hell is it? The Hillside Beach Club. Uh, is looking for a chief Instagram officer. That is what they're calling it, the chief Instagram officer. There's now a C-level position, uh, that, that chief-level position, for social media. Uh, it's, a, it's a clever fucking name. It is. I don't think it's a clever name. CIO is normally chief information officer. I know. They want to be the chief Instagram. i got to put the pen down. I'm going to click it the whole show. Um, I'm going to need it at the end. But uh, the Hillside Beach Club which is in Turkey, it's a resort in Turkey, uh -huh. uh, is hiring a chief Instagram officer. And the job requirements sound more like an itinerary of a vacation. You know, lounge around the resort, snapping pictures, posting to Instagram, beautiful photos of the beach and the accompanying resort. The job is extremely short, though. It's basically a contract job. That's weird, because, I mean, usually that position is... Like, full-time? Is, like, a CEO. Yeah. That's not, not a new thing. I mean, the... The social media and especially the just marketing as a whole is seen as a chief level position and right. is spoken to like the CEO, the CFO, and all that sort of thing. But, but what they're going to do is they're going to hire six people to do this, let them stay there for like a month taking pictures and posting on social media, and then they're done. See, they already have a good marketing department because of what they called this stupid stunt that they're doing. They already, they already marketing is not really an issue for them. No. So this is something. This is just their marketing it's, ploy of this. This is a marketing ploy from the marketing department. Which right, is, it's very hey, effective. You know what? It's going to get them a bunch of people to come out. Oh, it just gets eyes on it for no reason. Yeah, exactly. There's Instagrams in it. Yeah. Instagram is cool. Uh, all the Instagrams. So because of all of the Instagrams, Ryan, do you have any friends who post ridiculous things on Instagram all the time? Like people who post pictures of their hamburgers and their vacation. I sort of ignore it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I guess I do see Instagram pictures come through my Facebook feed occasionally, yeah. but I don't seek out yeah. Instagram anything. Yeah, I don't seek it out, but because people can tie it to their Facebook, you see it all the time. Hey, where'd this pen come from? It's one of those, like, I should use Instagram more often. We, we probably promote. both should, but we don't. But I don't like Instagram. Me either. At all. I Well, for those of us that don't like Instagram. Robots. We got robots on our side now. Uh, there's a, a company called Picnix. P I C N I X. Uh, they let you anonymously make fun of your friends on Instagram. I thought this was actually pretty cool. I think it's. I don't know why. So continue your story and then I'll fucking make fun of them. And please do. So basically, what these guys do is they set up a service where. You can find your friend's Instagram picture that you want to tell them that they're doing something wrong and be very passive aggressive about it. And you send them a link to that picture and what you want captioned over their picture. So what they do is they take the picture, they throw a black and white filter on it, and they put red text over it. 
with whatever your caption is. So like people who put way too many vacation pictures up, you can put on it, get a job. Or people who just put their hamburgers on the, you know, and all their other food on there, you could be like, eat the food, don't take pictures of it. You know, things like that. Or like people who just put themselves drinking all the time, you're an alcoholic. So it, it has a bunch of pre-made ones you can select too. But what made this kind of interesting was because you can't just write a script with Instagram, there's things around it. They wrote, and they, they wrote a script that talks through a Bluetooth keyboard emulator to a Android phone, and they use an Arduino robot to press a stylus down to actually submit it, so that it actually submits like from a finger press. How could they not get a stylus press signal? Like just through an OS. I, I don't know. Like I don't. I, I don't maybe they just really they... wanted to build a robot called Silent Bob because that's what they called the I robot. I mean, I guess it might be much easier just to have a robot do it than the coding, but boop, boop. I feel like it's boop, not boop. that difficult to make boop, boop. it do a stylus press in code. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if about programming Android apps to be able to do that. I know I can see where I press and where the stylus is located in the developer options of my Android device. Yeah. So I imagine you can hey. develop for where the stylus. I guess maybe you couldn't develop a press. I don't know. You might, you might not be able to. I, I don't know. Oh, robots. Robots. So were, were you going to tell me about how bad this is? No, I just I think that they could. I, there's so many things wrong with this. You're just too lazy to make your own insults at this point. Well, so you get to do it anonymously. You, you could do it anonymously if you fucking make it yourself. You can make yourself an anonymous insult. You don't need a robot in Turkey. or no, What is it? I don't know, I don't know where they're Where from. is it? Because I feel like this must be somewhere like... Uh, it does not say where they are. I don't know why I want to say Germany. It's probably not. It's probably not. I'm just... But, but I already have an update for you. Because we're that, we're that good, we have updates mid-show. They've already been shut down by Instagram. How do you get shut down by Instagram for an anonymous thing? They... Well, basically what happened was it hit Slashdot, it hit Petapixel, and it blew up. Yeah. So the first thing that happened is their site went down because too many people hit it too fast. Oh, yeah. And when they got the site back up, they found out that their account had been locked out by Instagram. But isn't the whole point of having an anonymous thing that they have multiple accounts? They didn't. They just had one account. <laughs> what the fuck kind of thing is this? <laughs> it was a publicity stunt to get people to look at all their other projects. Oh, good. I mean, I get that part. And but... It, it, <laughs> I think it's, I still think it's great. I still wanna I still wanna see if they get something back up. I that you see. Can use I later. understand it if they're talking about. That's a weird Wikipedia response to the to googling picks nicks. Um, <laughs> I get it as a publicity stunt. I don't get it as any sort of a practical idea. That that's the point. It doesn't have any practical idea. Oh, it's Nick's picks. Or is that not it? No, it's pick no. picks. All right, so to the person whose website is nixpixphoto.com, congratulations, you <laughs> randomly just got a bunch of shit for no reason. <laughs> yep, he has a wedding photographer. Yeah, he's going to get all sorts of... Maybe it was Good a stunt for by you. him. Yeah. Maybe he set up the stunt so that he could get lots more traffic. I don't know. Nixpix... Why is Nixpix a thing? Because somebody smarter than me came up with the name for their studio. I just, I don't know why Nixpix is a, a name that's used in like a thousand things on Google, but I'm... There's a thousand guys named Nick who pick things? N-I-X-P-I-X. It's so fucking clever. It's not even funny. Well, this is P-I-C-N-I-X. Yeah. That makes it different. Yeah, it makes it totally different. All right. All right. I'm, so there's more All Instagram right. shit, isn't there? There's one more Fuck. Instagram shit. And so then this, this then was the one that, this is just an idiot. This is just an idiot. That's why I thought you might like this. So, where is this? New York. New York City. No kidding. So, a graffiti artist in New York brags about his vandalism, graffiti style, on Instagram. He got 23 counts of felony vandalism. So, the New York Post, the New York Post talked about this. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. What's the selfie one? I mean, as much as the Instagram thing about a graffiti artist oh, getting... Okay, hit. so the selfie one that, this, that they related this yeah. to. So to, just to finish off this one, just because this is, this is the idiot, basically copycat, but not really. So this guy, was, they basically used the, the Instagram pictures on his account to tie him to the vandalism. Because <laughs> he was taking pictures of himself in front of the fucking Because he was taking pictures of himself in front of his uh, graffiti. 
Uh, but the other guy they're talking about, the guy who got 142 felony charges, was in Florida. And not, this, was, this guy already had outstanding warrants for drug trafficking, for uh, illegal possession of a firearm, illegally discharging a firearm, all sorts of shit that he did wrong in Florida. But he just used his Instagram account to just post selfies of himself doing all the things that he was doing illegally. Including bragging about his weapons cache in his house, which had almost like a half million dollars worth of, wep of, of like automatic and semi-automatic handguns and rifles that he had in his house. He took a picture of it, put it on Instagram. Hey, check this out. He would show his drug deals where he's changing money with people buying their drugs. He'd take a selfie of it right after he was done. The guy was a complete idiot. And the, and the worst, the worst or best, depending on how you want to look at it, the way they figured out who he was, is he did it in front of his car and they read the license plate off his car. Which was registered to himself. The, but the fact <laughs> that's how far he had to go was to take a picture in front of his license plate to qualify that's who he is. Oh no, they didn't have to use that to qualify that's who he is. That's how he got picked but up. But that's how he got picked up. How hard do you have to try to get caught by the police in this fucking country now? Because it's like, um, that's 143 counts. Yeah. Which means he has a gross, a little fucking gross of pictures of himself doing felonies on the internet. <laughs> and that's, that's, I'm sure that doesn't happen overnight. He was doing that for months yeah. and months and months. Yeah. Well, it took somebody saying, hey, maybe you guys should look at this. Because the cops don't look at every Instagram picture. The NSA does, but the local police don't look at every Instagram picture. There should be a filter for just money, right? Like, there should be a just... <laughs> the NSA should kick back any photo that shows money. more than $500 in cash on someone's person. Kick that down to the local cops. I mean, I, I, I would have had my picture in there. That's fine. If there weren't drugs all over me at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, so that, I just sold them all. The best part about that guy, who had the, the 142, when the police terrible picked joke. him up. It's a terrible joke. Well, yep. Continue. The, when the police picked him up, they said, so, what do you do for a living? I'm a fucking thief. That's his quote. I mean, if you're going to get... Well, hey, I give him a 10 for honesty on that one. I, I, he, he, can, he gets an A for honesty there. This is what fucking this is what <laughs> crime is now. <laughs> See how long you can be publicly a criminal before the cops find you? Sweet. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we got more. <laughs> There's no need for that. It's a twist off. You're going to make a mess now. Aha! Go. So, while you're chugging away there, uh, a user on Instructables named Captain Insano, <laughs> which makes sense. I after like the you, reference. Uh, yeah. Uh, has posted up the necessary files to 3D print a tilt shift uh, adapter for Nikon F mounts. This doesn't help me, but Ryan can play with it. Yeah, it's, it looks very interesting. Um, I mean, the idea of something that's very well engineered and 3D printed to be an adapter like that is nice. It beats the hell out of the homebrew options, yeah. um, which is basically hold it in front of the camera. And do some lens whacking. With some tape. Which is just like saying lens whacking. Oh, it's lens whacking with fucking black cloth and tape, yeah. basically. Yeah. But a nice, solid, like, reproducible image is nice. Nice idea. I can't say I'm going to run out and do it. Well, I mean, you could 3D print in materials other than plastic. It's not about the practicality of the 3D printing part. It's not even, like, the physical. Like, I don't mind doing that. I just don't. See I'm not super interested by extension. Like, by, by taking a lens that otherwise would do something else and modifying it to do another thing. Okay. So you'd just not, rather have a tilt shift. I would rather spend the $8,800 or whatever it is on a... Excuse me. The top of the line tilt shift is maybe $1,600 for a commercial grade... All right, Nikon tilt shift. That's the best. See, I, I was gonna tell you that the uh, that I also saw come across my my desk recently is that last line on there is the Warwick Public Library is now offering use of their three D printer to the public. Oh yeah, that, that was the big part about that story. That was kind of interesting. That you could he's the on the instructable. The guy has the files up there. You just download them and take them with you. I would do I, it. I would do it as a project. I wouldn't really do it as a, like a photography goal. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, just to play with 3D printing. That's an interesting project. It would, that's actually probably my entry to 3D printing if I was going to play with 3D printing. If anyone should purchase one. So Captain Insano is the reference I thought it was in Waterboy. That's, that was the Adam... I, I knew it was Adam Sandler. I was just yep. trying to figure out which Adam Sandler movie it was that that was a reference to. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. That's pretty funny. 
So, but or you could, if you are interested in this, I'll make sure there's a link to it. Um, you can send it out to. There are commercial places that do 3D printing now. Yeah, um, I like that. That gig must be nice. Well, you got to wait a couple of days because they're queued up pretty well. Well, that's but, what I mean. It must be nice to just be running a 3D printer for money now. Yeah, like that's a thing. I, no. It's an interesting, interesting consumer application for 3D printing that may have not existed a lot before. Yeah. Like, that's one of the issues I see with 3D printing taking off as a thing, mm -hmm. is the consumer applications are limited for most people's shit. Yeah. Really? Like, what do you, what, what, do you, what are you going to randomly 3D print? Yeah. With the technology as it stands right now. Me personally, it's not a lot. Well, it's now a Canon F mount tilt shift extension tube thing. It's a Robert. Nikon fucking tilt shift. Oh, yeah, thing. Nikon. Can't can can go they, fuck themselves they, for that one. Actually, the guy actually had put up the one that has no. It's your turn to change. No it, mount. I'm in the, yes. Without the mount built into it, instead of someone wants to tweak them and make an EOS or a Sony or a Pentax mount. That That's cool. That's he's, nice like, he's like, go ahead and do it. He's like, and if you figure out how to do it with multiple materials, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Following up on a story we had a couple weeks ago, uh, when Sony first announced their revolutionary new curved SEMO sensor, uh, they actually, someone has leaked a picture out. Uh, it looks exactly like you expect it to. It looks like a rectangle with a curve in it. Um, but the thing that they, they finally, when they saw the picture came out, they just said, hey, let's give you some information and go along with this. Yeah, 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 like this was on purpose. Which if it was on purpose, the picture that came out wouldn't be shit. Um, they would have made a big announcement. Uh, but with a curvature equivalent to the human eye, the sensor promises 1.4 times more sensitivity in the middle of the sensor and up to two times better sensitivity out on the edges, out in the corners. So, and all this with lower noise. So there's a question. Why yep. would the sensitivity in the center of the sensor be any different for a curved sensor? Uh, apparently it has something to do with the actual curve and the way the light hits it, because it not being perfectly flat, because, because the, when it comes through the lens, you know, it, it, it come, you're going through a spherical lenses, so it's not coming in straight anymore anyway. Mm -hmm. So rather than having to hit a flat spot, it's hitting a spot that's curved, that supposedly is curved to match the human eye, so it's exactly how you and I would see it, as opposed to having to be flattened and then fixed. Curious how that actually plays with lenses designed to hit a flat surface. We've spent so long designing lenses well, that's to work as well as possible with a flat sensor. Um, it might sort of backfire on most systems. Um, if like aspherical elements, aspherical elements are negative in a curved sensor yeah. environment, right? Mm -hmm. Well, odds are when they finally put this into a camera that we can use, it's going to have a whole new mount so that you can't use those lenses. You'll have to use the new lenses designed for the curved sensor. It doesn't seem that curved. It, it does for not. For something that's this big, it does not seem like it actually deviates from flat more than like a degree. It, it, I have no idea. I, it's, I, it's supposed to be the same curvature as your eye. I'm very dubious about that actually being a real picture. Well, because the, the, the picture that we see Looks almost exactly like a it, CMOS set chip. It looks a little better on the screen than it does print yeah, out. Yeah, but I saw it on the screen too. It's, it has such a slight curve to it. I'm very surprised. It might not need much of a curve to it. That, that might be... I was expecting You were more. expecting more? No, I was expecting like a good, say, like 5 to 10 degrees almost. Something that's like has an actual visible kind of cup to it. Yes, but... But then, is, if they're getting twice the sensitivity in the corners because they're not fighting it, they're, I, I they're mean, doing guess, something right. I guess the tolerances are so tiny that that maybe not doesn't make sense. Yeah. So that's that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Maybe it'll turn into a Nikon camera and then we can have something. <laughs> I would. Well, but, I mean, but Sony's trying so hard to be the well, new they, DSLR king that they 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 they'll hold on. Well, I think the reason they, they weren't so upset about this getting out when I was reading through some of the stuff from Sony, some of the related articles, was that they developed everything in-house. On equipment they developed in-house from engineers that still work there and have never left. 
So even if you could see a picture of the curved chip, you have no way to replicate it because you can't use standard construction yeah. technology to do it. They built their own machines to build the machines to build the chip. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. It's weird, especially in the days of massive like industrial espionage. It's, it's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. But, but it should be interesting to see where it goes. It might be the next thing for SLRs it, to it, keep SLRs relevant in the future. I guess. I don't know if it'll work for SLRs. I think this is where we come back to last time this came up is it's the thing that's going to make, I think it's the thing that's going to push mirrorless. That's when I was expecting the, the thing end. to be this thick. I was expecting it to be like a quarter inch thick. When your deviation from a flat plane is only like a millimeter at most, really, a millimeter or two, it doesn't change an SLR manufacturing or an SLR geometry. Right, but, you, but what you, the whole point of an SLR is what I see through my viewfinder is what the camera sees. You could you could dupe a viewfinder to see that, and what a viewfinder sees only differs from the curved sensor in light intensity and sharpness in the corners. So you you'll see it's that's kind of funny. It's it's interesting because you'll see the way your eye sees it. Mm -hmm. You could just do a curved mirror. That's the same kind of. Oh, I guess you could. You know, you, the mirror could be slightly, yeah. slightly arched in the corners, like the sensor is. I don't know. Yeah. Although it would smack into the top of the camera a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's something for them to figure out. It's. It'll be interesting to see where they go. The camera with it, would just be slightly taller. If they ever so do go more space to. This must be so goddamn expensive to produce. It must right be. Now. There's like there's no information about the cost on it. It's interesting that they're doing that right now. That they're spending all of that money on a sensor that's big. Because it is a big sensor. It's not. Yeah. It's not an. A, it's not a. It's not a tiny, tiny sensor. It's no, a it's big a full concept. It's a full frame. Sensor. Full thirty-five millimeter sensor. Yeah, that's cool. It's nice to see new stuff. Because really, the digital camera hasn't changed much. Mm. I mean, it's all been a race of sensitivity and sharpness and yeah, number I, of pixels on a chip. The, the difference between these three cameras is. Actually, kind of minimal. I mean, mechanically. Yeah, mechanically. The the, the actual guts are very the, the different. Chip, but. The chip technology has gotten way more complicated, yeah. but the but the concept of an SLR is still an SLR. Still a flat plane and a big flat mirror and all that kind of stuff. Shite him, plug, plug, whatever the hell was that <laughs> the principle that I beat of, you with? You sort of misinterpreted. <clears throat> I can't pronounce German. We know that. Well, it wasn't about pronunciation. It was concept. Misinterpretation. I took the wording right out of a photography dictionary. <laughs> it's... You went to what it was used for rather than its actual thing. Okay. I guess it's... Well, you, you can make up for it this week by beating me in the game this week, then. I don't want to. <laughs> I've seen what you called it. What did I call the game? The... Photographer taglines. Know, know your photographer taglines. I give no shits. Oh, you're gonna know all of them, so don't worry. Give no shits. Good. I get the com I get the nice chair again for two weeks. All right. You can call it the comfy chair. My ass is just bigger than yours. <laughs> so, I'm gonna rant a little bit about two different things. About sucking at traveling anywhere ever. No, I'm actually pretty good at traveling. So you know what I mean. But yeah. So, I got some do's and don'ts for going through the TSA with your camera. Don't by the travel way. with him. Okay, don't travel with me because I apparently bring the bad luck and bad weather everywhere and cut home at... Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Every, you know, every... You got home at blank every flight you've taken this month or whatever. Every flight... The last four trips I've taken, I've gotten home at like 2 or 3 in the morning. When I'm supposed to get home at like 9 o'clock. It's been bad. At least I take... I get to take some time and relax afterwards. Um, but as far as going through the TSA, they are actually... They're actually surprisingly nice to photographers. I am actually kind of amazed because I've seen them give a lot of people a lot of shit. But when they see photography gear, they're actually pretty nice. They're actually pretty easy to deal with. The biggest thing is if you pack your gear, there are certain ways you can pack your gear that will cause you problems, as I've learned. So this is firsthand experience. I'm, I'm, I'm doling out here. <laughs> um, one thing that I have done, it's a, it's a total space saver, and it, it, doesn't, it does not do well with the x-ray, is I'll take two speed lights, 
and put one this way and one this way. And what ends up happening is the capacitor banks are on opposite sides that way. And it just shows up like a big piece of metal in the x-ray. And they will go through your bag for that. But also if you stack them the same way, it just looks like one really dense piece of metal and they'll go yeah. through your bag for that. Yeah, there's no real tip about packing giant capacitors without being searched. Well, no, because if you don't stack them, like if they're separated, they don't care. Hmm. I don't know if there's a way in my bag I could not stack mine, but... Well, that, that was the whole thing. When I, when I traveled with the shoulder bag, uh, with the Tembra bag, it, what I was doing, well, when I traveled with the, back, when I traveled with the backpack, like if I'm taking a bunch of gear, I would stack them. That's how I learned this. And then I went one way and they went through my whole bag. And so I turned it the other way thinking, okay, well, if the capacitors are on top of each other, it'll just look like one flash, right? Nope. Looks too dense now and then they want to go through it. With the timber bag, I put them on opposite sides of the bag because I, I can put them vertically yeah. on opposite sides of the bag. No problems. Hmm. Goes right through. I will have to keep that in mind. So it's something to keep in just mind. Keep we, them in my pockets. Or do that. And get shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, It would be funny. So now I just imagine myself going through airport security, just pulling like 910 flash, 700 flash, <laughs> 7 and 200, just putting it all in a little basket and putting it through this x ray. They probably wouldn't know what to do with you for that. <laughs> <laughs> just putting it all back in my pocket to the other side. Um, x rays, not going to hurt your equipment. No, nope. people, you're dumb. People think that and even if you're shooting film, it's got to be over ISO 1600 before it'll do damage, which you're not shooting at yeah, that. Yeah, it used to be true. It's, not, it, it, it's, it's a mess. But just keep the SD cards on your person no, for some reason. Keep them in your camera. Yeah, I guess. No, because with the millimeter wavelength things, even an SD card trips them off and they, they go through you. They, they give you the pat yeah. down. Uh, actually, a sweaty t-shirt will get you a pat down, by the way. Oh, good. I learned this one coming back when I was running to get my plane that was apparently delayed for three hours, but they didn't tell <laughs> us that. Um, when I went through the, the millimeter wave scanner, it was like, they're like, okay, what do you have in the middle of your back? I'm like, nothing. The guy's like, pat me down. He's like, all right, up. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, sweat will set that off. I'm like... Sweat will set it off? You may have your sensor what set up a little too high. <laughs> what kind of machine? It's the one where you have to stand in and, and know, put your hands I over here, the millimeter wave detector. But what the Sweat? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody didn't think that shit through. <laughs> so I'm going to set that off one way or another. Yeah, I, I, I generally do. And they just do the wave with the wand and let me through. But uh, yeah, keep your SD card in your camera. They can't take it out of your camera. That's true. Like, legally, they can't take it out of your camera. Unless they want to confiscate your camera for evidence, in which case they have to have arrested you first. Mm. So as long as you don't give them a reason to arrest you, uh, your, your SD card is safe in your camera. Or compact flash or XQD or whatever you're storing on. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm in the process. I, I mean, I always dual write cards, so I'm, I'm sure I would keep one on my person. Yeah. Like, keep one in my wallet or in a, like a card carry in my wallet. Just because I, mean, I keep all the extras in my bag, and oh, they, yeah. they've never gone through them, but in theory they could. I don't know. This is more coming back than going. Yeah, um, going I don't care. Cause with, with data like that, I would almost mail it. Like it's, it's to the level where I would almost mail my card back to me. If I have the ability to, um, I try and upload before I come home. Well, yeah. I obviously would too, but if you don't have the time to process out in the field, it's tough. Yeah, then you... you you dump it out, you put it in an envelope would, and mail it to that's yourself. That's true, yeah, I would almost just priority mail it with like $10,000 of insurance for no reason. They don't ask questions, man, they just pay. Well, it's true, it's true, it's very oh, yeah. true. The value of the images on the card could be infinite, so you can yep. make up your own. Exactly. No, that's your own personal value. Well, like I said, they, I've insured things through the U.S. mail all the time. They never ask questions. They just charge you a fee for based on what you tell them the insurance is worth. I could rant about photography, photographytalk.com for hours. Because these fuckers just basically reprint everyone else's media. And somehow they have 500,000 people who follow them on Facebook and more than that registered users. And they make money off of every time you fucking click on something. How do I get that gig? Seriously, how do I get that gig? I want to know how do I get to just repost other people's stuff and make money off of it. 
Like, it doesn't even seem legal. It's like, and it's not like they even try and hide the fact they're reposting other people's stuff. Like, the, the, the watermarks and everything are still on it. Like, they just will post the things, like, on Adorama TV and be like, Hey, do you know anything about exposure? You should watch this video. And then they put a link to an Adorama TV YouTube video. And I'm just like, seriously? You get away with that? And, and then you get paid for the click-through? Like, what the hell? Adorama doesn't even get paid for the click-through because they don't monetize their videos. So, directly. Directly. I mean, they, they put them up so that you'll come they to the shop and buy. They advertise new equipment. Well, they do. <laughs> which they, is, which is... But, but like... Buy this 10,000 pieces of equipment. Well, they do that, too. But, like, they, lot, but some of the, like, their, their, their teaching videos, the closest thing they have to buy this equipment is, this is the equipment we use to do this. To be honest, if news agencies aren't exactly what you're describing anyway, I would be more offended. All right. CNN does exactly that. CNN it's offers... Con it's considered friggin' news. They don't offer commentary. They, here's this video we found on the internet. Okay. And they just play a video. They, they do that too. With that, that pisses but me. off. Everyone does. That's what it just news pisses me off. Is now. Uh, it's like one person. I think there's one guy. I think, I think it might be Elvis. Elvis is living in a basement in Michigan, generating all of the news and all of the content for the world, and we're all just repeating it for him. I mean, at least with that photography talk, when they're when you view a video on YouTube, the ad revenue is still going downstream. Right. So they're doing nothing but really helping people produce content on YouTube. If you go to their website <laughs> to do it, they get a paid for the click-through because... They may as well get paid for the click-through and then you get paid the same for the click that you got from them as you got from anyone else. True. I mean, if it's... If it's not generating income on the end of the person who made the content, I would see the reasoning. But as a medium for content, I'm okay with it. It's essentially what we're doing here, just putting our face behind it and making fun of it. But, but we're adding commentary. Yeah. So we're adding something to it. Maybe. A little bit. No, I, I'm, I'm generally okay with... I mean, I, I, we look at so many different things that do that. It's just not in the same sphere. Like, um, I fucking love science. It's the best website ever. And that's what it does do the same constantly. Thing. They add certain level of simple, like, certain level of commentary, certain level of writing, like, which I'm sure the photography top guys also add up. An intro of any kind. I, That's about it. Yeah. I don't know. It's what the internet is, and it's making sure your stuff is monetized to a way that you benefit from that kind of shit. And everybody makes money, right? It's the internet. Yes. Yes, we, we, are, we have lots of internet dollars. How do we convert those to real dollars? Internet dollars are real dollars. We don't have lots of internet dollars. No, we have 39 internet cents right now. Holy shit! <laughs> we should cash out. We can't. We have to get the $10 to cash out. We <laughs> demand for them to cash out that 39 internet cents. We have to get to $10 to cash out. That means we have to do this. This is episode 14. We have 39 cents. We're going to have to get to episode about 200 before we can cash out. I mined Bitcoin probably. Faster than we make it to in this video? Five internet dollars. <laughs> Which I formatted away at some point, I think. <laughs> if I do, f I, I, I looked. I never found my internet point zero zero two Bitcoin. <laughs> but at one point, point zero zero two Bitcoin was money. Not anymore. No, one Bitcoin six hundred bucks. That's about three bucks right now. Yeah. Went back up to six hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It was like two thousand six hundred yeah. at one point. Yeah, yeah, six hundred dollars like is still fine. Right there, no, man. yeah, it's still. It's because all the Columbia drug lords are using it to, for their money transfers. I mean, now. the fact that it's still six hundred dollars is very interesting. When we were mining them, it was like fifteen. Yeah, and then it spiked to like one hundred and twenty or two hundred, and that was a big deal. And then we sold ours. <laughs> <laughs> then it went up to like. Then it went to like twenty eight hundred dollars <laughs> for like a moment. You haven't stopped bringing around 600 again. Yeah, 600 is not bad for a currency that has no actual currency way to get it yeah. out of money and into other money. 
That's not true. There's an ATM in the Capitol building in DC. There are ATMs, but they don't like they're going through different trade houses and stuff, and they're they're processing fees. They did this on testing. Mm-hmm. And his experience is hilarious because he like he wanted his money back at one point, and they like they say they made fifty dollars over the day that they had them. It took him like thirty six hours to get his money back out of the ATM, <laughs> or more than that. He never. It took him. He tried for a full day, like a full day of getting his money back out of the ATM, and didn't work. So it took it took multiple days to get the money back out of the <laughs> machine. All right. So, so yeah. You, so while we were preparing for today's episode, we, I stopped on Adorama. Adorama's front page is advertising the Panasonic DMC FZ1000. Because so Panasonic has the best naming scheme You ever. can tell they don't give a fuck about the camera because it just is a bunch of letters and numbers. Um, no, like even the cameras they care about are like the GHX4. But they're like three or four letters, like a D4S, a D600, D610S, whatever the fuck you're going to call your camera. It's not 15 characters long. Yeah. So this camera caught my eye because it's 4K, 4K video recording, and 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames a second in MP4 encoding. Um, it's a 21 megapixel. It's a, a decent, interesting uh, length of lens. It's a... 25 to 400 millimeter Leica f2.8 to 4.0. Uh, it's an interesting, it's an all-in-one, it's not changeable lens, as far as I saw. The interesting part about it was that it's $897. So it's pre-ordering for sometime in August. But for $900, you get a 20 plus megapixel still camera with 4K recording. Interesting long zoom length. You know, OS, all sorts of bells and whistles, all in an under nine hundred dollar camera. Yeah, and it's it's an interesting camera in that aspect because it's also using uh, an MOS sensor, not a CMOS sensor. Oh, is it? I didn't actually catch that. Which is actually a variant of the CCD because the higher quality. But yeah. Because you know, CCD sensors have issues with noise, but it's the same sense. It's it's a similar sensor. I shouldn't say the same. Um, because the first and second gen four, micro four thirds, the Olympus cameras and, and things, were used, still using CCD. They weren't using CMOS because they got better picture quality per pixel. Yeah. Um, they've done something to make it, it's a full inch. So it's bigger than the micro four thirds. Yeah. So they're getting something, you know, they're, they're, they're getting the 20 megapixels, but they're getting it in CCD. So they're getting an even higher quality image. Hmm. Um, Let's, yeah, I didn't actually see that particular. Part of it. Yeah, that's one of just the is little that, sub notes. But. Yeah, I didn't see the. I don't know if that sensor is common among Panasonic or other. That technology is common among the Panasonics, but not in the size they're doing it in. Huh. They usually do it in the smaller micro four thirds. This yeah. is the first time they're doing it in the large, a larger uh, hmm. format, yeah, larger sensor. Yeah, it's an interesting camera. It's that's what really interests me about a lot of the photography stuff is not the cutting edge of building imaging equipment as expensive as possible. It's when it becomes affordable and able to be put to use by most people. That's what always blows me away by like the 600, the 610, the 6D, yep. the Tamron 24 to 70, any of the slightly older yeah, The Sigma 24 to 70? Because the Tamron 24 to 70 is crap. Sigma's 2470 Sigma and Tamron. 70, the Sigma Art series. So all what all well, the Tamron 7200. The Tamron, is nice. Tamron 70 to 200. All of those share a very accessible price point. Yeah. That's that's what makes them for the image quality you get out of them compared to what it was even five years ago. They have a very accessible price point, and more and more people like I see that. 24 to 70 often. I, a lot of yeah. people use that 24 to 70. It's very... I, I'm shocked at how many people I see using it. I'm it's like, a very wow. good lens. It's... It's downside. It, I mean, it's obviously not quite as sharp as the Nikon and the, the Canon 24 to 70 highest end yeah. lenses. But it's a quarter of the price or half the price or a third the price. Yeah. It's a, usually about half. I mean, I paid $600 for mine. So, I, I mean, my... You, but yours was mine was used. used. Mine was very gently used yeah. for six hundred dollars. Um, yeah, it looked 
less used than yours almost, but which is brand new. <laughs> For that price, it's so nice to see the image quality you get out of stuff. Oh yeah. It's, it used to be that professionals would have great digital image quality and then it was kind of, yeah. it was okay, you could do very well with, with, depending on what your application was, you could do okay with lower level equipment. Now, with even entry level equipment, you can put your photos in wherever the fuck you want. Is the only way I can put that. You can yeah. make large prints. You can even do large scale applications with low level equipment. Yeah, I mean, it's true. It's it's, it's it's capable of doing it now. Stuff is so much better I'm, than it used to. I'm actually kind of curious. I might I might look into grabbing one of these to use for the podcast. Actually, what the like a uh, the, no, the yeah the, the Panasonic because. I mean, we, we use three, but the Rebel is problematic. Uh, but if we replace yeah, you do the, the Rebel with the Panasonic, the the 4K. It's, make that the wide shot because it's 4K. So it's interesting to see it. It's nice that it's cheaper. You would need to be able to use it as something. I'm, interesting what it's, I'm interested in what its still quality is and what its kind of functional use feels like. I, I am too, and I'm wondering if uh, this is. We should ask. We should ask Paul when we go to hunts next time if it's something they're going to get in. I, I would bet money that they would have that on shelf because it's accessible and saleable ask easily. Paul, when it gets in, maybe demo. I'm going to throw this paper away and not remember that I wrote of that course down. Of you are. But so yeah, that was. An I wrote it little, down. Interesting little thing. It's kind of my, where I like to see things go. Yeah, no, that, that's exactly where we want to see things going, and that, that's, but, well, yeah, well, cause, because I'm doing more video work with Jesse these days, being able to have a 4K camera available for that. That's where the issue, it's a non-interchangeable lens. Yeah. And it's a smaller sensor. I get it for, for certain video applications like this podcast, like any podcast, it's great. When you're trying to be creative with video, I don't think it's going to cut it. That, that, I just don't think it's going to cut it. It's, mm. You're too pigeonholed into one camera. You, you have to be able to do more. Do more with the camera with a better image quality. Because as much as it's a 4K sensor, I'm sure the image quality would be great. It's got to compromise somewhere. And the compromise is going to be in end user image quality at 1080p. Yeah, really, because it's Probably. the glass is not going to be, the glass is not going to be anywhere near. It's like a near. glass. So, they made a forty-two minute video of just them polishing lenses. Like a glass doesn't mean shit. Just like Zeiss glass doesn't mean, mean shit. shit. I don't know. A Zeiss glass can be a, the worst fucking lens on the face of the planet, or the best depending on what you buy and where. Yeah. And Zeiss glass and my cell phone. Ho ho ho! Click, and I have the best pictures ever. They Sony cameras you, have Zeiss lenses and Sony. It's, 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 it's just branding. It's yeah, that, that's all branding at that point. But oh yeah, that's cool. Play your right. fucking. So last week we played the vocabulary quiz, uh, which by the way takes forever to edit because I actually put the score on the screen and it's a real pain in the ass. It, it looks really nice when I'm we're done. Sure, it was worth it. It was totally worth it. Uh, I hope this game goes a little faster this time. Well, hurry up then. Uh, this week is yes. Know your catchphrases. No. Yes. Much like David Letterman's Know Your Current Events or Know Your Cuts of Meat, this week we are going to play Know Your Photographer Catchphrases. These could be either a phrase they use, the name of their blog. How am I going to know any of these? You're going to know all of these. This oh, is how fuck. You're going to know all these. Or, uh, no, that, that's pretty much it. It's either some, a phrase they say or the name of their blog. That's pretty much all I have here. Okay. All right, so your first one, super, super easy. They're all, I'm giving you points for all of them. There's no easy round this week. Frono's photo. The answer is the question. But it's not. Jared Poland. There you go, it's Jared Poland. The, the whole sentence is, I'm Jared Poland, blank, Frono's photo. Dot com. So you got, you got one for Jared Poland. Uh, the Spontaneous World is the name of his blog. Is it now? Yes. Fuck if I know that. That would be Mark Wallace on his trip around the world. Nope. 
This one you might have a harder time with. After this, you should know all of them. Uh, you keep shooting. Nope. That would be <laughs> Brian Peterson. Big, big Adorama pre pre presenter. Not a clue. All right. This one, if you don't get, I'm going to be sad. Where does your friend yeah. stop? You put you? I put me in there. <laughs> I needed to come up with 11, and I needed me. I had to put myself in. I couldn't, I couldn't, find, I couldn't find 11 of them to come up with. This is... <laughs> Why would you make 10, then? Because <laughs> I needed a tiebreaker. <laughs> All right. This is the most viewed and subscribed photography channel in the world. Digital Rev. Yes, it is. It is Digital Rev. This is what they put on their, on their YouTube page. <laughs> what is page. his tagline as far as No, that's say. it. <laughs> they don't oh, actually that, is that all you wrote down? <laughs> that's all I wrote down because they, they, he doesn't have a tagline. I watch enough of his videos. He doesn't actually have a tagline. Other than breaking shit. Other than breaking shit. Uh, but that's what they have posted like right across their, their logo cool. on, on everything. Uh, this photographer's main production is called Take and Make Great Photography. I had to actually cut off the end of the name of the show because it has his name in it. His name starts with Y? No. <laughs> I give you half credit, he's British. His name ends with Y? This does end with Y. Hoey? Yes, Gavin yeah. Hoey. You get half credit. Yay. I just really like Gavin Hoey. I think he's a lot of fun to watch. Um, this one, you better know because you introduced me to the man. Get yes. your gear out. The Australian guy. The Australian guy. Or his name is... <laughs> or his handle on YouTube is... That Nikon guy. All right, um, that Nikon guy. Matt Granger. Matt Granger. All right. I haven't watched Matt Granger in a while. I haven't either. He really hasn't he done much that has been good Nobody recently. Cares. He Well, he started going, like, touring around the world and stopped making anything interesting. Oh, Fuck him, right? Yeah. Well, there's Mark Wallace while he's touring around the world, still making interesting videos to watch. The Matt Granger's just like, this is what I did Matt in Singapore Matt Granger wasn't making week. all of his money on those fucking videos. That's true. All right. This one. Hey, indie filmmakers. I mean, the only one that we ever know is Indie Mogul or that Bingo. guy, whatever that fucking guy is. Griffin Hammond. Um, it's just me remembering what I've told you about. It, pretty much. Uh, you didn't tell me about Griffin Hammond. I told you about Griffin Hammond. You told me about the Film Riot guys. Anyway, I shoot raw. I used Jared twice. I'm just going to give you that one. Why? Because I didn't have enough. Uh, yeah. I threw this together very last done second. nine. That's an odd number. <laughs> that, odd, that is an odd number. Uh, I've never actually heard him say this, but it's on his website in about six different places. I live every day for six seconds. Fucking Matt. Yeah. It's Matt Norris. I'm his partner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're at seven and a half. You already won. Oh, good. You already won. You get the, you get the fancy chair next week. Do you want to bet it all on the last one? Nope. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last one I have here, his blog is called Stuck in Customs. It sounds familiar. I think I've seen it. I just don't remember. It's another Aussie. Nope. Trey Ratcliffe, Wouldn't have known it. the guy who's obsessed with HDR. In fact, everything he has ever done. Did he do the HDR. Gigapan thing? Yeah. That's why I would have seen him. But other than that, I didn't. So, you got seven and a half out of 11. I only, you only needed six to win, so seven and a half. That makes you a winner. I'm going to have confetti and shit going in in post. And I'm not cleaning up confetti. That's why I said in post. It's all new digital confetti. Take five minutes and make up a shitty game for next week, because that's about how long I put into this. <laughs> I will make up a better game. You should. Blackjack hookers. <laughs> I don't know if I want Pawtucket hookers. Can you, can you, can you at least get See, that's, some classy that's ones? like a great album title. <laughs> I, if I ever heard one in my life. I don't know if I want Pawtucket hookers. <laughs> There's a, like a, it's obviously just some guy with a guitar sitting outside. <laughs> Oh no, maybe that'll be the that, maybe that'll be the title of my uh, photography 
coffee table book. Get on that, Greg Easton. <laughs> Ten bucks. That's, that's all it would take. <laughs> no, that's all of Kentucky Oker costs. That's what I was getting at. Congratulations. <laughs> My brain is gone. All right. So we generally have to throw things at the We camera generally have to throw point, things right? at one of the cameras. Uh, <laughs> That's conversation all, gets, <laughs> conversation gets better when we all get involved. Like, comment, subscribe, share. I'm not gonna get on a tangent about homeless people this week. Good night. <laughs>